Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Feinberg, uh, I've read your testimony uh, clear through. It states in your testimony it seems that Frey is uh, ready to act directing penalties on PTC if not implemented. Also, you state that uh, Frey is uh, ready to act in the interim to bring railroads into safety compliance. You suggest that Congress should authorize F FRA to uh, require railroads to use alternative safety technology on specified lines. You also say, and I quote, these requirements will likely cost, be costly to railroads. Can you uh, share with me your ideas on this alternative technology? Yes, sir, what I, was ref what I was referring to was what I would refer to as the safety gap that will exist between January 1st, 2016, so the, the day after the deadline, and when PTC is actually implemented by each railroad, and what, if anything, should be done to raise the bar on safety during that, during that gap. So whether it's additional communication between crew members and additional person in the cab, we have not made final determinations. I think they would be railroad by railroad specific, but it would be how do you increase safety between the date of the deadline that is missed and when PTC is actually implemented. In your testimony, you stated that these will be costly to railroads. So I've, you've clearly run the numbers on how much it will cost. Can you share with me those calculations or how you come to that point with that we statement? We just frequently hear from railroads that it, items like additional crew members are quite costly. That's based on that assertion. Okay. Mr. Arsino, um, with the safety uh, being paramount, I'd like you to delve into the cost a little more. Uh, uh, in your testimony, uh, that the co commuter and the freight rail industries will s have spent over billions of dollars on PTC implementation, although progress has been substantial, it, but it remains... Uh, d remains to be done before PTC can be safely in implemented nationwide. Uh, company, companies on how much money have they spent out of pocket, uh, do you believe these costs will be passed down to consumers? Which is naturally what happens, but I just want to hear from you. Is that... Uh, in my opinion, yes, they would be passed down to consumers. Uh, when we raise our fares in order to cover PTC costs and other items, uh, we have to pass those costs on, depending on we only have X amount of state and federal funding. Um, the challenge that we have on the commuter rail side is the higher you raise the fares, the less likely you're going to retain all of your ridership. At a time when we want to get more people on our trains and off the roads, uh, that's a big challenge for us. So it's a very difficult balancing act to still be able to provide safe, valuable service for our customers. Do you believe that we've done all that we can as a committee, as, a, uh, as Congress, to, to help move this process forward? Uh, do you feel like that uh, you're being penalized for our acts, lack of action or inaction or the uh, FRA's actions or interactions? I'd like to hear your opinion on that also. That's a challenging question. The, yes, it is. <laughs> the, the answer is uh, this is a very expensive proposition for all railroads, especially commuter railroads where we don't have the type of funding that we need. I believe that Congress uh, needs to fund the PTC project. It's important. It's important for the safety of our customers, our employees, and the communities we operate through. So it's very important to me that the, the federal government supplies some funding for it. Thank you. Mr. Longro, uh, you made the statement that uh, the immediate impact of the deadline will uh, be that uh, our SIA has the potential of making certain rail operations illegal. Can you uh, discuss the ramification, ram these ramifications a little bit more, if you would, please? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. We're in a legal dilemma, uh, as I mentioned in the opening testimony. We have a law that requires PTC to be implemented on lines that carry passengers and lines that carry certain commodities, TIH and PIH commodities. Um, and so the transport of those after 20, January the 1st of 2016 would run in contravention to the Rail Safety Improvement Act. Yet we also have a common carrier obligation that requires us uh, to haul freight that's tendered uh, on reasonable requests and at reasonable terms and, and conditions. And so, you know, we're in a situation of which law do we violate? And we have that same conundrum on the passenger side. I mean, Amtrak runs over us, you know, a law that's 40, 45 years old. And so we're required to, you know, allow Amtrak to run as well as a number of other commuters, including uh, Mr. Orsino. And, you know, we also have this obligation under the Rail Safety Improvement Act, which requires us uh, to complete PTC on those same lines. And so if we're not able to meet it on those lines, 
do we need to, to tell Mr. Arsino that he can't run? I mean, these are the challenges, you know, that many, many lawyers right now are trying to resolve. And we don't have the answer to that quite yet. Thank you. My time has expired.